What's up guys, my name is Cody, and today we're bringing you a video, uh, something I've actually wanted to do for a long time, and I haven't, uh, I haven't been able to talk about it as much as I wanted to, as you can see my se season record has been terrible this year. I don't really know what's, what, uh, what's going on in the online community right now. I do want to point out a couple things uh, real quick to you guys for you to look at. Uh, what happens in the Madden community, like it's, it's really cool to me at this point in the year to like go back to the beginning and like go back and just kind of see the evolution of the game and like what concepts like now people are running versus like what concepts they were running in the beginning of the year. Uh, and, I, and, I, and I also want to apply this to ratings in a moment, but I want to talk about this real quick. Um, I want to show you a play that I just got like de de demolished with. <laughs> like, and I had never seen, I would literally never seen this before. I don't even know what playbook he was in. I'm assuming it's New York Jets. Uh, I don't know if that's a popular thing or not. I just, I just have been seeing it. Uh, I know uh, some guys were talking about the crossfire blitzes, uh, or like, cro like I don't know what it's called. But what it, what it really comes down to is acceleration. Uh, so like this crossfire three seam. I've heard a lot of people talk about how like this is a really good defense uh, for inside zone and for uh, like pressure. I mean, why wouldn't it be too? I mean, look at it. You've got linebackers coming up the middle for the inside zone. And see, the thing about this all, guys, comes back to this. Like, what you'll find with Madden is like real NFL concepts always come true, but they it's like it takes the gaming community a little bit to get there um and so just wanted to kind of throw that out there so you might check out this crossfire three seam if you're looking for that uh, but this guy was running something else i think it was at a dime i really think it was i think it was at a dime uh but what it was was it was the same concept it was just crossfire um crossfire blitz this one doesn't have it i don't think maybe it's in the one four six but um uh, but yeah Anyways, so yeah, it was this like cross through fire. Um, that wasn't it though. I can't remember what it was called off the top of my head. Or like, if I saw it, I could. And I, I wanted to just tell you guys about it because, like, I think it would be. I mean, I think it's a. I mean, obviously, it's a good defense. I mean, this what this dude did was he had um, like really good acceleration in the game. It really came down to like he had really guy. He had guys with really really good acceleration in the game and it made this blitz for him it really did um it, it would not have been as good if he didn't have those guys because you could see what was happening was my linemen they just couldn't block they, they just they just like couldn't keep up with him I, I can't remember where i saw it before i wanted to show you guys because before i got into the stuff for today but i don't know if i can i don't know if i have time i'll have to look i'll have to look for it but i've seen a lot of people having success with stuff like that and it what it sparked for me was it sparked uh, a conversation I wanted to have with you guys about the ratings uh, and why, you know, what ratings really do, what they matter, what ratings should you look for. I think it was this cross. I mean, it wasn't this play, but anyway, it's some kind of cross. It's probably this 236. I bet it was. This is what he was in. Yes, here it is. Okay, so this is what he was running. This three fire buzz uh, show too. So we'll get into lab. We'll show you. We'll show you some stuff with it. But it was really, it was really good. Um, you may check it out. I don't know if he just got lucky. It didn't seem like it because the pressure was all game long. Um, but mess around with the crossfire blitzes, guys. Let me know. Uh, I'm gonna do some research on it and uh, and probably give you guys some tips on it. I've never been a fan of crossfire blitzes uh, just because I feel like it leaves you so vulnerable. But it's actually, I mean, it's an interesting concept, and I haven't really talked enough about it on my channel. So I'll probably talk about it later. I remember in Madden 13, I was a big fan of Mike Will Cross 3 from the 4-3 under. And uh, I, I would like to talk about that at some point. Okay, so anyway, so back to ratings. I wanted to talk about this. Uh, I've, I've wanted to talk about this for a really long time. So first off, if you're not on mutthead.com right now, make sure to pull that up. Just start typing in your browser, mutthead.com. And what you want to do is you want to go to the mutt database, Madden 16 players. And what it's going to do for you, it's going to sort all the players out for you. Now, what I want to do today is I want to discuss what ratings matter, uh, what, what ratings to look for. I want to kind of give my two cents on it. Uh, because I, I've, I've done a lot of research on this topic. Um, I've done a lot of examining and reflection and all that stuff. 
And I just kind of want to show you my lineup first, and we're going to kind of talk about this as it goes. So, all right, so quarterback, we have Matt Ryan. Uh, now, this is the campus hero Matt Ryan, not the gold Matt Ryan. But the gold, I started out with that one, the gold Matt Ryan. And he did really, really well for me. And then I upgraded to the Tony Romo, uh, the style master Tony Romo. Uh, and he has, let me just give you a stat, basically the progression, Tony Romo has... Uh, he he's a 92 overall. He has 93 short, 92 medium, 94 deep in terms of accuracy. And Tony Romo was perfectly fine for me. Never missed a throw. I'm actually going to I'm actually going to sell this Matt Ryan and go back to that Tony Romo. Uh, the only reason I was with this Matt Ryan was because at the time he was the same price as the Tony Romo, and he has he has more speed. That is literally the only reason. Uh, and so I can roll out with him and things like that. The thing about quarterbacks is one of the things I want to recommend to you is height. I think height is very underrated when it comes to quarterbacks, um, and here's why. When you throw the launch point for the ball, um, like, like for example, um, I'll throw, like out of the bunch, because I'm working on the bunch right now, you guys know, so I'll throw uh, short passes like spacing and things like that, and you need to throw them with like a low pass lead. If your quarterback is tall, the trajectory is so much better. You're not going to hit your linemen. I don't know if you're like me, but in the beginning of the year, I was hitting my linemen so much, so much, so much. And uh, I was doing some solo challenges with, uh, let me show you who I had. I was doing some 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 uh, some sh solo challenges with Paxton Lynch. Um, it was for the, because it was the salary cap head-to-head uh, -head seasons, and Paxton Lynch uh, had really he was like the best quarterback for like 50 cap value and so i was trying him out uh, and he was cheap but anyway this paxton lynch never missed a throw for me i was using this 79 he's got 50 cap value uh very inexpensive but he's six foot seven okay and what six foot seven does and i had never considered this but i i never had it gives you really good trajectory for throwing the ball and i had never thought about this before like literally, never, it never had dawned on me to get a quarterback that was tall, but, um, but I just remember like when I was when I was playing with Tony Romo, when I was playing with that Tony Romo, so many times I would have issues throwing the ball short because it would hit my lineman, and so then I just I didn't do this on purpose. It just kind of happened. But I was using Paxton Lynch, and dude, I mean, he just he did he did so so well. Uh, so Paxton Lynch is the second tallest ha a quarterback in the game. The tallest quarterback is Brock Osweiler from the Broncos. He actually has a card out, and I'll probably try this card. Uh, it's his Super Bowl his Super Bowl card. He has 80 speed, 92 short accuracy, 89 medium, and 88 deep. He's only six thousand coins. Um, and then the NFL Movers Edition has the same stats as the Matt Ryan, except he has uh, more throw power. So let me pull him up for you guys so you can see. Um, and I know uh, I was going to do this. I was going to do like screen capture and stuff, but I just, I, I, I honestly, I don't know how to do it. <laughs> but anyway, so this is the one. So this is 15K, and he's got uh, 99 throw power, 95 short, 93 medium, and 92 deep. Uh, let me compare that to the Matt Ryan card. And you don't have to get 6'8", because um, Matt Ryan, I've never thrown the ball into my line with Matt Ryan, and he's 6'4". So you don't have to get the 6'8", but again, it's just kind of like, might as well, because, I mean, the accuracy stats, in my opinion, they don't matter as much. Um, so Matt Ryan's a little bit more accurate. He's got 93 short, 95 medium, and 96 deep. Uh, so he's better in the medium and deep range. Uh, but anyway, so... So, so that's a little bit of a discussion on it. I kind of want to close the quarterback discussion out with this. Uh, with this, first of all, uh, mobile quarterbacks. So, like your Michael Vicks and your, uh, you know, your Michael Vicks, your Cam Newtons, those guys. The thing about those quarterbacks is number one, with the way the quarterback spies are so good this year, there's really no reason to get a mobile uh, a, a quarterback with that much mobility because when you get a, like a Michael Vick, you're paying for the mobility. Like the flashback pick or guys like that, you're paying you're paying for the mobility. Well, like a guy like this Brock Osweiler, he's got 82 speed. I mean, he's got enough mobility to get you through, and he's just cheaper. I mean, let me pull up the Michael Vick and just tell you. I mean, and trust me, I've spent the coin on the quarterbacks. I, I'm telling you guys, I I spent I mean I spent like 800k or something on uh, 
on a Tom Brady card. And mm. let me just give you this Michael Vick. So he is uh, six foot, and he's got 97 speed, 94 short, 90 medium, 95 deep, 99 throw power. Okay, but the thing about this Vic, number one, he's left-handed. If you're not used to throwing with a left-handed quarterback, it's actually a very big adjustment. It's actually a lot harder than you feel. The other thing, too, is that 97 speed. Here's the deal with the 97 speed. If they put a quarterback spy out there, the quarterback spy almost always wins. Almost always. I have never, ever seen a quarterback outrun my quarterback spy. So I don't value that. I don't value that at all. I'd rather have a white dude like Osweiler get out there and the thing about, and I'm not, I'm not, not I'm, I'm just saying like a white guy, meaning like slower than Michael Vick. I'm not, you know, not saying that just because he's white, they're going to ignore him. I'm saying because he's a six eight pocket passing quarterback, they're not probably going to spy. And if they don't spy, then I can roll out if I need to. But for the most part, I don't really run with the quarterback. And so I don't need that mobility. And that's why I don't need to pay for it. I mean, the Michael Vick, let me just tell you, Michael Vick right now, the ultimate legend, 798,000 coins. Okay. The flashback Vick. Now, with 93 speed, the cheapest, probably the cheapest one out there with like decent throwing stats is 50,000 coins. This Osweiler is 15,000. Okay, so I mean, you just do the math. I mean, I'm telling you guys, and I, I, I'm telling you this because I've sat where you're sitting, where you guys are sitting, and I have thought that I needed to pay a lot for a quarterback, and looking back, I realize I don't. I want and, and we're going to talk in another video about why. Uh, why you get bad throws, why you get, you know, what what is the real reason for overthrows? Because what you're going to find out, guys, it doesn't have to do with their stats most of the time. Uh, most of the time it has to do with you. And uh, I'm really excited about that video because we're going to talk about it in depth. And uh, it's going to give you guys a lot of tips going forward because I'm, I'm just really excited about the video. Okay, so so that is quarterback. Now I want to talk about... Uh, I want to talk about running back a little bit. Um, I'm not as I'm not as I, I've done a lot of research on the running backs, and so I can give you something. Right now, I'm running this throwback Darren Sproles. It's kind of an experiment because he's got he's only got 88 speed, and it's actually done really really good for me. Um, I don't know if you guys know. In the beginning of the year, there was uh, the prop like. One of the better backs was the Silver Dre Archer. The reason was because he had um, he had 96 speed and 95 acceleration. Sure. You know, he had all those good stats. And I'll just redo. So, so, so then they came out with a yeah. his hero Dre Archer, who is 99 speed, 99 acceleration, 99 juke move, 97 agility, and 98 elusiveness. If you look at this Darren Sproles that I've got on the screen. He's got uh, 99 agility. He's got 96 juke move, um, but he doesn't have very good. Not the same. He's much slower, much much slower than Dre Archer. And as I kind of reflect on like my experience, because I I ran with this campus hero for a long time, and that my my Dre Archer card, he still got caught. He still got caught. Um, I see. I, I've seen people play with this like Golden Ticket Bo Jackson, who has 101 speed. You, I'm telling you guys, you get caught in this game. Speed is, speed at the running back position is not a big deal this year. I'm, it, it's just not. And I think that's part of the reason why in the beginning of the season we didn't have a whole lot of guys that had really, really breakaway speed. Uh, because what you even found later on, it didn't matter. Um, you, you can have 99 speed, you're still going to get caught. And because of that, I've now resorted to another stat with the running back that I value much, 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 much more than speed, and that is route running. Uh, route running in, and then also agility. The reason I value agility over juke move, um, because that Dre Archer has 99 juke move, whereas the Sproles only has 96. reason I value agility over juke move is pretty simple. Um, with agility, what it allows you to do is you can kind of, you, can, you, you just have so much more control over where your player goes. Um, and the shorter the running back, the better as well. So Darren Sproles is five foot six. Dre Archer is five foot eight. I know it's not a big deal, uh, but it is a big deal. Um, I was playing with the Matt Forte, um, the the Matt Forte card, and the reason I don't know if he's, he's yeah he's six foot two. Okay, so I was playing with this NFL mover Matt Forte. He's six foot two, and I'll probably actually look back into him a little bit later on. 
uh, in the year. But the reason I was playing with him was because uh, he has really good route running. But what I noticed was he just he just could never get away from people. And I found, and it was really hard to run. It was he was really really frustrating to run with him in between the tackles. And what I found was I think a lot of it has to do with his general makeup, his general stature, uh, being a taller guy. So I resorted to this uh, Darren Sproles. Darren Sproles is the shortest running back in the NFL. And uh, I was going with his, I'm going with his throwback right now. I might upgrade to his signature series because I have the coins to do that. Uh, and that'll give me 98 uh, juke move along with all, and, and actually 96 speed. But anyway, his throwback edition, I was just trying it out to see his speed, how his speed all worked out. But anyway, uh, you know, kind of reflecting on that experiment, I'm telling you guys, speed is not a, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, trucking is not that big of a deal this year. Uh, I've always been a fan of trucking backs because I'm a big fan of Earl Campbell. Uh, he's my one of my favorite running backs of all time. Uh, the, he's famous for running uh, over, uh, I think he's ran over, I can't remember who it was. I want to say it was Brian Bosworth, but I can't remember. Uh, but anyway, Earl Campbell is just a famous trucking running back, and I really liked him a lot. Uh, so naturally, I want to run with guys like uh, the Derrick Henry, the LeGarrette Blunt, uh, guys with those trucking readings. What I found uh, was they didn't break very many tackles. Um, they just, for whatever reason, they just didn't. It, it didn't translate very well on the field. They didn't break very many tackles for me. And part of it, and the other thing too about the trucking backs was. Like, I couldn't get away from anybody, again. And so what I'm going to suggest to you guys is, yeah, you need a trucking back, but you only need a trucking back for fullback dives. And and so I would I would really kind of tank that position. Uh, I don't I use this Roosevelt Nix. Um, that's because he's got 95 strength. I think strength uh, for trucking backs is one of the most underrated ratings you can have. That's why this Eric Dickerson... Uh, he's about 30,000 coins right now. Uh, he's got 97 strength and 97 trucking. He's the only got 82 speed, but his strength and trucking combination make, and he's also 6'3". Um, you know, for trucking backs, you want size. The team of the week, J.J. Watt, uh, is really good too because he's got 96 strength, 97 trucking, 97 acceleration, and he's 6'5". Okay, and he's only 24,000 coins. So, you know, he's not going to be hard to get, uh, but I would always just... I just kind of go with the Chris Ivory uh, team MVP because he's got 98 trucking, 99 carry, 90 strength. So he's he's pretty much my go-to if I need to if I'm looking to put. But I don't really run the ball anymore. Um, I run the only runs I really run are inside zone uh, from the from a trip set. I also run inside zone from a bunch um, like a single back bunch, and then quick tosses. Uh, from a single back bunch, and then occasionally I'll run a full back dive, but it's very rare. Uh, very rare do I even run a full back dive anymore. So, and then I'll run a draw every now and then. Because uh, I've actually, draws kind of sucked last year. They're not that bad. Um, they're not, they're definitely not that bad anymore. Okay, so, but anyway, that's my thoughts on the running back. Um, I would recommend. The one step I will say by far most, especially if you're a passing team, so if you like come out and throw the ball, if you throw the ball probably 50% of the time or more, uh, you want to get route running. Uh, so this Darren Sproles that I have here, he has 91 route running. It's actually higher than his signature series. His signature series card only has 88. Um, but anyway, 91 route running, here's the deal uh, with route running. When you're facing two man under, cover two man, this is the stat that you need. And we're going to talk a little bit more about it when we get to receivers. But when you go to linebackers, uh, if you go look at the linebackers on Mutthead, what you'll find is that uh, what, what happens is your route running rating is getting matched up into man coverage rating. Well, at this point of the year, um, the best man covering linebacker is Telvin Smith Golden Ticket at 92. So what we need to do is have a running back that has either as good or better route running than 90-ish 92. Well, my Matt, that NFL mover Matt Forte card has 92 route running, and then this Darren Sproles has 91 route running. So 
Uh, I'm kind of mainly, the only real reason I'm st sticking with the Sproles right now is I'm just testing them out. I had been running that Matt Forte NFL mover card, and I'll pull him up for you. And anyway, long story short, both backs have done really well for me. Uh, they, they've both done pretty much everything that I needed them to do. Uh, now, I don't run the ball a lot. Um, but I, use, I, I do know a little bit about guys who run the ball a lot. I'm a big fan of problems, and I know he runs inside zone probably 30 or 40, at least 40% 40 of the time. But this Matt Forte card, this NFL mover, I was running with him, and he he was solid for me. Um, and he's 6'2". He's one of the tallest running backs in the NFL. Uh, I'm telling you guys, he's got that 87 strength in his trucking rating. And, I mean, this guy is the best all-around back, I think, for a passing oriented offense that you're going to find. Uh, if you want to run the ball, like you just want to go traditional run the, like, you know, really focus on running, uh, like inside zones and stuff like that, I would recommend the, uh, I tried out the Barry Sanders card uh, when I was testing it out. I didn't, I didn't find very much. I just didn't think it was that good. And it's got 103 agility, 101 juke move. Um, the card that I thought uh, ran the best out of any card that I've ever I'd ever had in terms of just running inside zones with is Eric Dickerson, uh, the ultimate legend Eric Dickerson, who has uh, it. I was running with the Speed Edition, so he's got 98 speed, 100 acceleration, 98 agility, 99 juke move, and that's why I think the key stat when running the ball is if you want quickness, you want acceleration. So his 100 acceleration is really part of what made it so easy to run with him. And then agility and juke moves. So the, all of those those three are what I would look for. Um, but, but yeah, guys, uh, that's what I would say about the running back. I wouldn't spend a ton. <laughs> I, I would really try to laser down what you want. Um, I ran with a Theo Riddick card. Uh, he had like 80-something speed. I ran with him for a while, and he ran just fine. Um, so don't put too much stress on your bank, on your mutt bank with running back. I would recommend, uh, I would really recommend either the Campus Hero Dree Archer. This is just for pure running the ball if you would just want to run. I'd recommend the Campus Hero Dree Archer. Obviously, I'd recommend the Speed Edition of Eric Dickerson. Um, I had some success with the TJ Yeldon. Uh, but really the biggest, but don't go out. Uh, the Barry just, it, was, it wasn't that good for me. I mean, I'm just going to be straight with you guys. And, be, and I think the reason is because his, um, his, I think the reason why Barry Sanders wasn't as good is I think he was as good as everybody else was, but he wasn't that much better. And that's my point here. Uh, we're trying to get bang for your buck. We're trying to get value. And so... <sighs> I just think route running is more important, and, and part of it has to do with because I pass the ball a lot. But I think even more specifically than just route running, agility, and um, you don't always have to pay. You don't have to pay 1.5 million coins. You can get guys that are like 20,000 coins, and they're going to do just as good. Um, so that's what I've tried to show. Okay, uh, so wide receivers, uh, route running, and catching traffic. Those are the, literally the only, th only two things I look at anymore. Um, the reason, first, and then I do have a speed guy. I have this John Brown. I don't ever use him. I wish I wouldn't have got him. <laughs> I uh, went out and did a couple Schefter Stars things, and it was literally the dumbest thing I did because, like, I'm ready to kind of move on from John Brown, but I can't because I can't get any coins from him, so I have to have him on my roster, you know, because... I mean, he's got 97 speed. And, I mean, really the only time I'll ever use John Brown is, I mean, he has 97 speed. He's also got a route running. He's got 90, which isn't, I mean, it's not terrible for, like, just a pure speed dude. Um, there are receivers that are faster than him now. When I got him, it was that he was the fastest one. But the thing about, uh, the thing about John Brown, again, if I could sell him, I would. I just don't find a ton of value uh, in in him. The thing about speed, I will say this though: speed is speed is like a third tier. Um, it's kind of a third thing where it's like it's a nice to have, but it's not like a 
it's not like it's a uh, it's not like it's a must have. Uh, route running is a must have. Uh, I I have to have good route running. I will sacrifice any rating uh, before I'll sacrifice route running. And the reason is because of man-to-man -man coverage. The route running is what gets your receivers open in man-to-man -man coverage. So I've got Jordy Nelson. I've got this Tyler Boyd. Uh, this guy's a monster. Uh, it's the draft. He's only got 98 route running, which, I mean, only 98, but... What he does have is that 99 catch in traffic. The Wes Welker Draft Champions Edition. I've been looking into him, but he's just too much. I'm not going to spend... The other thing, too, is you have to also think about is one more point in route running with me spending 400 more thousand you know, coins. The Draft Champions Wes Welker is 222,000 coins. He has 98 catch in traffic and 99 route running. Uh, Tyler Boyd beats him out in every other category except for that route running. And the thing is, the Tyler Boyd card is only 26,000 coins. So, you know, think about that uh, a little bit too when you're looking at it. I've completely tanked my line on purpose. Uh, all I have is just the best pass blockers. So I have 90s across the board. 96, 96, 91, 95, 96. Again, I don't really run the ball much. Um, and I don't really, I don't know. I can't decide if pass block really does anything. I'm trying to test it out right now. I don't know if it does or not. Um, I just can't tell, honestly. And the other thing, too, is that so many, you sh there's so many defensive players that have, like, 99 power move or 99 finesse move. So I don't really know, honestly, about this lineup for my my guys I was running with like an all run blocking lineup but they weren't doing very well for me either um, so it was like either way I went up I, I didn't it wasn't like they were very dominant um, so run block does matter but I don't run the ball you know what I mean like I just I don't run the ball very much uh, I mean I may run it once or twice I, I really don't run it hardly ever and these guys have been pretty good for me so far uh, tight end, same thing, route running. Uh, the only reason I got Kobe Fleener here instead of Tony Gonzalez is Kobe Fleener is only 10,000 coins. Tony Gonzalez is like 185. Um, and he's got 94 route running, which again, normally Kobe Fleener, and especially in my offense because I'm running the bunch, he's normally matched up against a linebacker. And again, you don't, there's not any linebacker in the game that has 94 man coverage, so you're going to win there. Uh, the other thing about this, I was running the Mutt Superlative Jordan Reed, but this guy was cheaper. He also is, um, he's not better um, in the passing game, but he is cheaper and he was taller. Um, so I was just testing him out to see how he's doing. He's done pretty well for me so far, uh, but I don't really throw the ball to my tight end very much. Um, I just don't, never, uh, for whatever reason, the routes don't seem to ever really go to the tight end. The other thing about him, too, compared to the Jordan Reed, is he's got more speed. Uh, and I do have one play, uh, like when I'm running floods and stuff like that, I need that. Sp the speed helps me because what it does is it allows me to, how do I say this? Basically, the speed allows me uh, to be able to, like, get outside uh, on, like, flat routes. And that's pretty much, and that's pretty much the only reason I... I do it. I was running with the campus here, Terrence Williams, in this spot for T. Wilton. Uh, and the reason that I went away from it was Terrence Williams didn't have his route running was like 96. Um, his spectacular catching, his spectacular catching and stuff like that was off the charts, and he made so many good catches for me. But this T. Y. Hilton, I think, has done pretty much the same thing, and so that's that's why I have been that that's why I've been running with him. Uh, one of the guys I'm interested, in, I'm probably going to try this guy out at some point. Uh, is the legend Heinz Ward. Uh, the reason I was thinking about the legend Heinz Ward is because he's got 91 speed, which isn't 92, but it is 91. He's also got 96 route running, which is a little bit of an upgrade. He's got 99 catch in traffic, so uh, I'm probably definitely going to try him out. He's more expensive. He's like 62,000 coins, but I mean, he's. I think he would be really good uh, for, for my offense, so I'll probably try him out, and probably guys will get a chance to see him in the next video. Clearly, I mean, I have some coins I can play with here. These two guys are just run blockers. 
I sub them in. If I ever want to run the ball, I've got Hartstock Smith, and then I've also got Knicks. Running block is run block is the only thing I look for when running the ball. It's just, run, it's just straight run block. I don't care about an impact block anymore. Um, I just care about run block. I don't really care about strength either. Uh, strength is like a nice to have, but it's not a main for me. For me anymore, it's not. Um, I, I just I've had strong guys before, and I've had weak guys, and it, I've never seen a difference. I've never really been able to tell a difference. So that's pretty much it for the offense. Um, defense, I just want to talk about, basically there's, well, I, I want to do some more research on the, on everybody except the corners. So, because we've already, we're already, we're already at 30 minutes long. So I just want to talk corners for a minute. And the only reason Arik Armstead's here is because I can't get anything for him. Uh, I would have sold him, but I can't get anything for him. So I'm going with Casey Hayward and Trey Waynes. I'm actually probably going to get rid of this Casey Hayward and go with somebody else. Um, well, I'll probably keep the Hayward and get rid of the Maxwell. But the Maxwell is interesting, too, because he's got that 82 hit power. Um, I'm going with this Iloka, uh, which is like the final edition Iloka, too. The thing you'll notice is speed and zone coverage. So Trey Waynes is probably the best. He's the best corner I've ever had. Um as far as performance, uh, in my opinion. He's got 96 speed, 96 zone, uh, 78 catching, which is enough where he's going to make that catch. Again, I don't value catching at all. I literally, I'm going to have Byron Maxwell on my team. I don't value catching at all anymore because too many times I've been user controlling Calvin Johnson over the middle of the field, and he'll just, uh, he'll drop it. Like, literally, he'll drop a pick six. Uh, and, I mean, let me just show you. He's got... How do you do? I don't know how you do this. I'll just show you down here. But he has, uh, if you go to all attributes here, you'll see he's got 96 catching. Okay, so I just don't value catching this year. Um, but anyway, so and the reason I only I don't really play much man um, because of main reason I don't play much man is because I base align a lot. My defense is built around base aligning and showing blitz. And I need this corner right here has got to be able to hold his own against the run. He's got to be able to come off the edge and make a, you know, break a block and whatever. And this Georgia Loco has been phenomenal at that. So because of all that, I, I, I mainly play zone. Um, I've thought about maybe getting like the night train lane or something. But man, they're expensive. <laughs> I just... You know, I don't like spending a lot of coins on players, but, but yeah, I mean, if you want to, I mean, if you could afford the night train lane, uh, he has like 90 man, 90 zone, and 90 hit power, and 90 block shedder, I mean, he's just got crazy stats, yeah, I'd try him out, um, but I think the threshold for speed is 96 on the corner, Trey, Trey Waynes has never been beat deep for me, Hayward has been beat deep for me. Uh, so that's why I'm probably going to move. I'm going to probably move Hayward to the strong safety so he can be back off the line of scrimmage, and then I'm probably going to get a different guy. Uh, but I've tried so many combinations of corners out, guys. Trust me, I have I've done everything you can. I've looked at purely speed, and I get mossed every play. I've looked for purely zone coverage, and I'll get, you know, they'll just lob it over them. I've looked for height, um, and then you'll still get mossed. I've looked at spectacular catch. Guy, you know, put guys back there with good spec catch. They don't do. I mean, it's the same thing. What I have found is it comes down to your zone coverage and your speed. Anything else, it doesn't. It doesn't really matter. You're catching. Don't worry about it. I mean, yeah, it's nice to have a Trey Wayne's where you get 78. I would say the threshold for catching is like 60, 68. Once you get guys that are about 70, normally they normally they they make the routine picks for you. Uh, this Georgia Locos made. You know, intercept several interceptions for me, and he's got 68 catching. So, anyways, that's what we got for you guys today. Like I said, um, that this is just my thoughts on on ratings. Um, feel free to disagree with me, but again, and, and you can see it from my gameplay. Uh, we'll show you some. We'll probably get a game up tomorrow, but this is just some thoughts on it. There's several more things I want to talk about about it, and we'll talk about it more throughout the uh, off season. Uh, but there are some things that apply every year, and I'm really excited to talk about that tomorrow uh, in our gameplay. So, anyways, thanks guys for watching. If you have any questions, let me know. And uh, also, guys.